Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So in today's video I'm going to talk about how to hold the violin. So I know I've talked about how to hold the violin in my 1 to 30 violin course. I have a 1 to 30 violin course on the internet. It does guarantee to take you from a complete beginner to a decent accomplished intermediate level. There is no other course like it on the internet um, and I'll, I'll link a video coming up to it either this side, whatever, off the screen that you can click on it and watch it after this one and that video will tell you what you're going to learn uh, the process and all that kind of thing it is a completely online course as well so you download the books you do it all, all online in your own time and it comes with interactive videos so let's get on to the video i want to talk about how to hold the violin so i know i have discussed that in in that video obviously as part of my my 1 to 30 lessons but i just wanted to make another quick little video just to kind of reiterate and go over things and those of you that are following my course you, you, you will already know this but there's nothing wrong and it doesn't hurt with kind of revisiting these kind of things because you don't have a teacher telling you what's what and you don't have a teacher telling you what whether how you're holding the bow the violin you know all those kind of things is with whether what you're doing is right or not so and you don't have a teacher telling you all those things that you are doing you are still doing correctly and still in the right way so it's really really good to revisit those things because if you're holding the violin wrong it's the basic fundamental of everything really so you if you're holding the violin wrong you're going to be holding the bow wrong everything is going to kind of stem off and, and be wrong from there the first thing i should probably mention as well is that i don't use a shoulder rest or a cloth or anything now that's just 100 percent personal preference it's just uh it's, it's just how i've evolved playing so i used to use a shoulder rest way back in the day many many years ago 20 odd years ago in actual fact i used to use one of these this is a wolf a Wolf Forte Primo shoulder rest. Now, a Wolf do uh, two versions of these. They do this one, Forte Primo, and the second Forte Secondo, I think. I don't like the Secondo, I'll tell you why. Because it has like a bit of metal that kind of moves in and out, and I, I feel like it just causes it to slip off the violin. This is the best shoulder rest I've come on, I've, I've come across. It's the one I recommend to everybody. It isn't a cheap shoulder rest. I want to say it's something like, or oh, last time I looked, 20, 30 pounds, 20, 30 dollars, something around that ballpark. I'll put a link to it on Amazon and link it underneath if I can find it for you. But this is the one I recommend. This one fits three quarters to full size violin. And I really like it because it, it doesn't slip off the violin. So when you put it on, you just, you put it on like that. It doesn't hurt the violin. It doesn't, it's, it's not gonna come off. It's not one of those shoulder rests that as soon as you take the violin down, it, it drops on the floor. Like I see on so many students, um, that have come to me with kind of the, the cheap shoulder rests. Buy cheap, buy twice, just saying. But the reason why this is so good is just simply because of the rubber feet that you can see there. And this doesn't come off the violin at all. And it doesn't hurt the violin either. You just hold it that way actually so you can see it. So this is the one I recommend. So I, I don't use this, but if you have a particularly long neck area here, um, or you're just having problems holding the violin, you might want to try a shoulder rest because a shoulder rest will pretty much put the violin automatically in the right place. It's very difficult to hold the violin down in front of you with a shoulder rest because it's just immediately so uncomfortable. So it will automatically just want to sit on your shoulder in the right place here and just sort of sit under the chin. It kind of, it, there's no other way for the violin to kind of move about really. So if that's the case, then that's the case. But for me, Oh, I forgot how much I hated them. I, I hate them because I just don't like how rigid they are. Now, I just feel like I've, I'm so restricted. The violin is here. My hand has to be here. I can't, I feel like I just can't, I can't move the violin up and down because it's just, oh, it's so restrictive. So I personally don't like these. No disrespect to anyone that uses them. It's a 100% personal preference. But whether you use one or not, putting the violin in, in the right place is still the same thing. So what I'm going to start by doing is putting the violin on my shoulder. If I turn this way, you can see that the violin just goes on the shoulder there. The next thing you do is just put your chin onto the chin rest. That's essentially, that's, that's essentially it and that's essentially what you're going to be doing. But where you hold the violin is really important. So imagine that in front of you, you've got a clock. So 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, you know, and so on. I think that it should go around about 
10 o'clock or somewhere between sort of the 10 and the 11. So where the small hand would be if you're thinking half past 10, if you want to be exact. So nine o'clock would be, would be here for me. So that's too far out to the side. 10 o'clock would sort of be there. I just feel like it's, it's, it's too much that way. 11 o'clock is too much to the front. So I'd say somewhere in between 10 and 11. So half past 10, if you want to be pedantic. So that's kind of where I, I, I would have the violin sitting. Definitely not out to the front. Definitely not down like this, how I see a lot of students playing. And definitely not with your elbow touching into your hip there. Elbow should be away from the hip. So once you've got it at 12, 11, 10, 10, somewhere between 10 and 11, into the neck, neck goes down on the violin. And then what happens for me is that my shoulder does come up a little bit. So I do, I do bring my shoulder up an inch or so. Now, again, I get a lot of comments on this with people saying, you shouldn't bring your shoulder up. Um, you're gonna get a lot of shoulder pro I don't have any shoulder problems, thank you very much. My shoulder is, is fine moving up and down. My playing has been fine for the last 30 years. It isn't causing any problems to me. But what I will say is that, you know, you can bring your shoulder up a touch. There is absolutely nothing wrong with bringing that, the shoulder up a touch. Like I said, I've been doing it for years. I don't have any problems. Nothing wrong with what I do. Lots of world famous violinists. Um, Itzhak Perlman for one, doesn't play with the shoulder rests, uh, something like this. He just has a cloth just to stop any slide. Perhaps if he's got a shirt, he doesn't want it sort of sliding down. So he just has like a cloth or something to just to, just to keep the grip there, but he doesn't have a shoulder rest either. So do you know what? If Itzhak Perlman doesn't have a shoulder rest and I don't have a shoulder rest then, that's good enough for me. So if you are feeling like you're bringing up your shoulder way too much and then you're starting to tense the trapezium muscle here, then you need to be thinking about maybe using a sponge or a cloth folded up just to bridge that gap or something like this. But for me, you can see, violin goes up, kind of my, my chin goes down and my shoulders. They, they, sort of, they sort of meet the violin in the middle in a way. But like I said, I don't have any problems. Um, and look, I can still move my hand up and down like this, which some people seem to think that I can't because I'm raising my shoulder, but I absolutely can. Uh, I, my vibrato is absolutely fine. Everything about this is absolutely fine. So if you're thinking the shoulder is a concern, it isn't a concern and it, it shouldn't be a concern for everybody. But like I say, if you are experiencing shoulder pain, just find an alternative method. This is all 100% personal preference, but the key features are violin out to the side at somewhere between that, that 10 and that 11, and that's pretty much it. So whether you have a cloth, um, a sponge, whatever you wanna put under there, a shoulder rest, let me put my shoulder rest back on. If I put this back on, oh look, the violin still goes out at exactly the same place as it was a second ago. If I turn around so that you can see here, the only difference is, is that, you know, I'm not, the violin is pushed, the violin is now pushed up to my chin because the shoulder rest is taken up, you know, what is that, about four inches, say, of, of gap there, so my shoulder doesn't have to, have to come up at all, but again, I mean, I can still move my arm, I can still move my shoulder if I really wanted to move my shoulder. I can still do all the same things that I did, only for me, I now find that I'm, I'm rigid. My performance is now gonna suffer because I can't actually move the violin. I've gotta move the violin as a whole, like this, and I don't wanna move the violin as a whole, like this. I want to move my shoulder around. So I feel like because there is no shoulder rest, my shoulder can actually move. So you can see now that I'm actually getting a lot more, I'm getting a lot more swing from this area here rather than having to bring everything kind of like that. Does, does that sort of make sense? So when the shoulder rest is on, I'm losing that swing from here. I can't actually swing it up and down anymore because it's actually quite painful because this is digging in. So I'm actually, the only thing I can move now is actually move this whole kind of unit. If I take the shoulder rest off, you know, I, I can literally just, it can swing from this point here. So imagine the hinges being here, the violin can move. So I feel less bulky overall. And when I'm, you know, when I'm playing, I, I just feel like I can just, you know, move the violin around how I want to, depending on what kind of piece that I'm playing. So 
there we go. That's how I hold the violin. That's why I hold the violin. That's why I don't like to use a shoulder rest, but why you, you can use a shoulder rest if you want to. But my final words on this would be to just find the most comfortable thing for you. Find what works for you. What works for me doesn't necessarily work for you as long as you are holding the violin out in the right place, not too far out, not too far at the front you know, somewhere between that 10 and 11, and that's pretty much fine. So if you've got too much of a gap there, find a shoulder rest. If you find that the shoulder rest is, is just too thick by the time you put the violin on, your neck's craning up here, then use a cloth folded up several times, one of those little sponges, those kind of little leather leather chamois sponges that you use, those yellow ones that you get that you use for the car, uh, and you can just put it on with a, with a piece of elastic band. You can put the elastic band on the button here and then attach it to the little corner, little corner piece there to keep it on. Whatever, you have to go away and experiment with that and that's gonna be different for everybody. And you might have a particularly protruding um, uh, clavicle bone that, that you've got here. So again, you've just got to experiment, but this is what works for me. This is how I play. This is how I've been playing for the last 34 years and it's working fine for me. And don't forget as well, I did mention at the start of the video that I do have a one to 30 violin course as well. For those of you that, that don't know, uh, what I will do is put a link to the video coming up in a card, which I forget which corner it is now. Whichever corner it is coming up now, there'll be a link to the video, uh, which is all about my one to 30 violin course. It's a really, really good violin course. It teaches you from absolute scratch. It, there's, there's nothing else like it on the internet. I know I keep going on about this, but there really isn't anything like it on the internet. And it 100% guarantees, guarantees, to teach you and take you from a complete and utter beginner to a really decent, accomplished, intermediate level. I absolutely stand by that guarantee and I can assure you that it works. And as I say, there's nothing else like it on the internet. So if you are looking, if you're watching this video and you're just trying to start out and you're really not sure where, where to start, uh, you haven't got a teacher, you don't want to spend a lot of money, then check out my course. I will put a link to it underneath this, this video because I can't link it obviously in this video. It, everything will be linked underneath the video and I will link another video which will show you what you're going to learn, what you're going to be going through, what you're going to go from and all that kind of good stuff. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!